There are many hams with goals of being part of an engaging, talkative amateur radio community. And do you know where you can find these hams? An amateur radio club. Hi everyone, I'm Cody, W3AMG with Bridgecom Systems. Today I'm going to share my five must-haves for repeaters with you so you can get your radio club back to being an actual ham radio club. Before you start wading through pages of repeaters, you have to make sure they fit a particular specification. Firstly, your repeater needs to have an outstanding receiver. This requirement should be at the top of your list. If your repeater cannot hear very well, then it's not very good, and the range will be limited. There are three key parameters to consider when choosing a receiver. Receiver sensitivity, receiver selectivity, and intermodulation rejection. If your repeater meets these standards, then it will need to have proper power capabilities. RF power is probably the one repeater specification that gets the most attention. Having as much RF power as possible has merit. However, there are many considerations when buying a repeater. The goal is to get as much transmit power out of the repeater as possible without destroying the repeater or reducing the repeater's life. For example, if a repeater spec states it produces 50 watts, the question to ask is, can it deliver this power for long periods of time without interruption? If not, it might only be good at 25 watts. Therefore, it's crucial to consider manufacturer's duty rating and cooling processes. Now that you know your repeater's power, you need to find a power supply. For ease of use and installation, you'll want to have a built-in power supply. Having a built-in power supply will alleviate a lot of aggravation because you won't have to source the correct power supply to run your repeater. With a Bridgecom repeater, we have already done this for you. It should also have the ability to be connected to an external DC power source, like a battery or an external power supply. Also, if there's a built-in battery charger, the internal power supply can trickle charge the battery. Your repeater must have a controller, and the repeater you purchase should have a primary built-in repeater controller. Your repeater's built-in controller will save you the task of connecting your repeater to an aftermarket controller, not to mention the time and money. The accessory port is where the magic happens and you can make a repeater very versatile and flexible. For example, do you want to connect an external controller that will allow for voice updates? Do you want to join a digital modem that will turn your repeater into a digital repeater? Are the proper connections available? At this point, you need to consider the following question rather carefully. Which would you rather be, a ham who will never know what it means to have a meaningful amateur radio club? Or do you want to be a go-getter and take the lead on sourcing your club a brand new repeater? Here at Bridgecom Systems, we will provide your club an affordable, tailored, turnkey repeater system the whole club will enjoy. The result is a reliable system capable of handling your weekly net to meet new contacts and renew old friendships. To secure one of these outstanding repeaters for your club, call us at the number in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'm Cody, W3AMG with Bridgecom Systems, 7-3.